Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian at WhisperStatus74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you're seeing me, please consider liking and subscribing. We are a very small tech community, real tech for real people. I hope everybody is doing well. It is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all. Today we'll be doing a video on SDR settings for gaming on the Sony X950H, which is the 2020 Sony flagship for this year in the 4K, 4K division. And I've had this display. Special thank you to Robert and Wendy Zahn of Value Electronics. They have an amazing store in Scarsdale, New York. Please consider making your next purchase through them. Their website description, website link will be in the description below. They have an amazing store in Scarsdale, New York with all types of audio, visual equipment, you name it. They got it. Their gallery is closed due to what's happening in the world, but their website is open. They will ship nationwide. Thank you, Robert and Wendy. SDR settings. Um, I am not a professional calibrator. That is not my career. I'm just sharing you with you what I use. Um, I think settings videos are very subjective to what I like, what you like, your panel, and my panel. All I'm really going to give you is some of the rules that I follow. There are no rules. Whatever you want, whatever you like is really what you're going to be looking for. There is no wrong answer. Again, this is not a calibration. And where my tastes fall are somewhere in accuracy and vibrancy. I don't like everything to look completely natural. Sometimes I like to use some of the settings that the real professionals don't like to use. Sometimes I'm out of the box. I like to make the Sony or have the Sony look as accurate as it normally does. The biggest advantage to Sony displays for me, they look amazing in game mode. A lot of the other manufacturers, in order to keep latency and input lag, down they will alter their image whether it's disabling the backlight or just having the image not look anything like the other presets and sony's game mode looks very close to the other presets it's a little bit brighter it's absolutely gorgeous we're gonna go through sdr settings here um we'll describe them as we go through but what i want to say with any display whether it's the sony samsung lg for those of you that you know know a lot about this and go through TVs, you know that with SDR, you can back down some of the settings. Though we always talk about peak brightness and nits and contrast ratio, a lot of times you can knock a lot of these settings down to get a better image, whether it's with gaming, uh, 1080p, cable box, uh, satellite. So I always recommend to have different presets, different custom, different standard. Save them so your image looks... You wish there was um, one image to rule them all or one setting that you could just turn on and every image looks great. My plasma kind of has that image. I don't have to change any presets when I use my plasma, but with LEDs and even OLEDs, I find I like to use different settings for different content. So I recommend um, cable TV, 1080p. We'll do a totally separate video on that and what settings to knock down so you like the image. A lot of you guys will turn on a display like the Sony X950H, which is like 11 or 1200 nits, and wonder why a standard definition Blu-ray or DVD or a Blu-ray doesn't look great as they're not mastered in that net and they look noisy. And it's always better to have a separate uh, preset, which is why we're gonna go through SDR gaming, which will be completely different than HDR gaming. For those of you, again, that are new to 4K, HDR when enabled on Sony and other manufacturers will take certain settings such as extended dynamic range and backlight and push them to max. The reason they push them to max, that's the way they need it for the HDR to be shown correctly. So I don't mess with those settings when in HDR. The last video I did was HDR. This will be SDR, so a lot of those settings will be backed off to make the image look better. We'll be using 2016 Doom which to me is a better looking game. Um, I might say better looking. I prefer the look of Doom 2016 over Doom Eternal. Um, it's less saturated. It has a more realistic, less cartoony image. I will show you my favorite level um, in this game, and I will show you what some of the different settings on the X950H do that don't look great in SDR that look good in HDR. All right, guys, I'll see you behind the camera. That's four minutes in. Sorry about the long description. Let's get behind the camera, and we'll go through this rather quickly. Okay guys, we are behind the camera on Doom 2016. Doom Eternal is awesome, but I like the look of Doom 2016 better. It has a more realistic image, and this is my favorite level in the game to change the settings. 
Let me just kill these guys real quick. We've got a little lag going. I've not played this in a while. All right, so we're actually going to come on over here. And why I like using Foundry, which is, this is the name of this level, is because of the orange and the red. Okay, so we'll actually step down here. There we go. We get over to picture settings. We are in game mode. You can venture out of game mode. I'm not someone that thinks you have to be in game mode. I prefer game mode. Again, the best part about Sony is being able to remain in game mode and have a very good looking image, especially in PC. Sony doesn't make you go into PC mode or change the color or anything. So here we are, auto picture mode is off. Light sensor is off. Brightness is your backlight. On SDR content, I actually like my brightness to be down for these purposes at about 12. I like the image to be deeper. I like the image to be a little bit more accurate. Down to contrast on SDR, I do like the contrast to be a little bit lower at 90. Gamma, which I normally have at its default setting for HDR, I do like minus one. You can also go minus two, but we'll keep it for minus one here. Black level, which is the actual brightness I like to have at its default. Again, if you want, you can dim this down, but I think Gamma already takes care of that. Black adjust. I do like black adjust on high. Some people don't like it. They feel it crushes the blacks. I do actually like it on high. And it's not a huge difference off. So it gives the image a little bit more of a defined look. Advanced contrast enhancer. This is the one that a lot of you guys either love or you hate. On a game like Doom, that has that kind of detail, you can use it. It won't hurt the image. Um, again, Advanced Contrast Enhancer seems more powerful on high, but in a game that's this high quality, you can use it all day. So my rule of thumb, and again, there is no right or wrong, this is just what I use, Advanced Contrast Enhancer, use it if the content is of high quality. A game like Modern Warfare, which has got a little bit of jagged edges, I don't use it. Games like this that are gorgeous, that have, they're, bare, they're flawless, in my opinion, I'll rock medium. But for this purposes, we're going to keep it off. Local dimming, I always keep on high. On a full array local dimming, I see no reason to disable it. Look how it changes the image. So, really touching on this, if other manufacturers are knocking off local dimming, look how much the image changes with it on and then with it off. It just gets to be very, very flat. And if this was a black image, you would see some haloing and some clouding. So for me, auto local dimming is on, on high, other than Vizio, which actually behaves the opposite and you can use it on low. Extended dynamic range is an interesting one. For SDR content, I either have it off, depending on the game. Games that can handle it, games that are of high quality like Doom, it does look nice on. If you do end up seeing any kind of banding or um, you can see the zones, we call them jail bars. And some games that have fog or games that have a lot of smoke, if you see kind of banding down the screen, a lot of times extended dynamic range is pushing the game too high and I would disable it. Again, for high-end co uh, content, I would leave it on. But on content where you see any kind of banding or what looks like dirty screen effect and you know your con you know your panel is clean, enable this. On my 900E, a lot of times it is disabled unless the content can handle it. Color, for me, color saturation is always pretty much on its default setting. I don't mess with the hue. Color temperature, I do like neutral. A lot of people like the more accurate, warm, um, expert one, expert two. For me, it is neutral. I do like cool as well, but that's just preference. Now this is the one that's gonna make the biggest difference is live color. Live color, I will typically disable in SDR and I'll show you why. As we get higher, the image gets a little bit orange here. We're gonna go back down to what it should look like 
and that's what it should look like. So, meaning what it should look like is this is what the, the image is supposed to look like as far as the director and creator of the game. Live color on HDR to me looks awesome. I wanted to start this game with live color on high or medium to show you how orange this level can get. So on um, this is my PC, I tend to keep live color off. Back down into the settings. As far as clarity, sharpest is always at 50. I don't see any reason to go lower than that. Sometimes on really low content, if you're seeing too many, too much aliasing or jaggies, you can knock this down, but it will blur the image. Reality Creation is adding extra software to make things cleaner. It says adjust. I don't like the feature. Um, I would put it on manual if you want to actually use it. Bring it up to about 20. That's as high as I would go. I like my image to be as clean as possible. I find this is like um, noise reduction where it adds more noise than it takes away. Again, I've seen it on Vizio, something similar, and it actually does change it, but it does make it blurry. So for me, if you want to use this, you would enable it on manual or have it on auto. And then on manual, I would literally go up to maybe 20. Now, when it comes to Sony settings, which I find interesting, is if you're going to turn it off, go all the way to minimum, come in, and then shut it off. If you shut it off sometimes at a certain point, it'll still be enabled. Black frame insertion actually does that. Back through the settings again. So those are basically the settings, but motion is totally disabled. Motion flow, we have off. And I also have smooth gradation off. I don't love how it looks. It does look fine in games. I don't love it in films. Wrong, let me reverse that. I don't mind it in films. I don't love it in games. So we're pausing it. Now restarting the level again, coming in, and this is, in my opinion, just a more accurate, realistic image than what we had before. The biggest difference you're seeing is live color, disabled. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go in Same area. Oh, this guy's gonna come after me, hold on. It's funny, my controller's actually wandering. All right, we're gonna stay here. And we are gonna cartoon it up a little bit. If you do want more vibrancy. Again, we have our brightness down low. Keep that as, as, um, as high as you want. But we'll go into default. We can ramp this up. If you want a brighter image, contrast, put up to 95. Gamma, I wouldn't go past its normal. Black adjust on. Medium for advanced contrast enhancer. And then if you do want to do live color, you have a much more vibrant image. Now the image isn't true but that's just a few steps where it looks a little bit more saturated and washed out but if that's what you guys like that's what you guys like that's a few little instances to show you exactly what each setting does so you can say does that look better like that or like that now, neither one is wrong, one is more accurate, one is more vibrant. It's just a quick illustration of what each setting does. And again, there is no wrong answer. If you want things to pop and look 3D, or what I like in my settings is a little bit of both. I want things to look somewhat natural, but I don't really want all my games to look realistic. But it's just a quick little overview of what each setting does. And a level like this, um, with Doom really does exhibit you know both sides of the spectrum you can make it look very natural or you can make it look off the charts cartoony if you want Doom Eternal is very cartoony 
I actually do like Doom 2016 uh, quite a bit better as far as visually. And that's quick overview of the settings. And a lot of these settings can apply to other displays as far as the backlight keeping things a little bit lower for SDR. With HDR, I would keep those settings at max. That's what the manufacturer wants. I tend to stay with their recommendations for HDR. All right, guys, I'm Brian at WhisperStatus74. I hope everybody is doing well. I will talk to you soon. I will see you in the comments and uh, take care.